All right, welcome back. So let's go over question five. It says, um, a tennis player makes a successful first serve 51% of the time. Assume that each serve is independent of the others. If she serves nine times, what is the probability that she gets at most three successful first serves in? Okay, so for this question, you're going to, and um, I, wrote it out, I wrote it out over here for us. For this problem, you need to use the uh, normal approximation I'm sorry, the binomial distribution over here. So here, this is just uh, to recall this information. Uh, N represents the number of trials. X is equal to the number of success of N trials. P is a numerical probability of success. Q is a numerical probability of failure. And these conditions have to happen within the problem. And they do. Notice that, are, do we have a fixed number of trials? Uh, yeah, we have nine nine trials, so that's fixed. Is the outcome of each trial independent from one another? Yes. You know, you either make a successful serve or you don't. Uh, each experiment has two outcomes. That's also true because you either get a successful serve or you don't. Um, and the probability for success must be the same for each trial. And that's right. The probability that you have a successful serve is 51% for each time you serve the tennis ball so uh, we're allowed to use a binomial distribution okay so how do we use this problem to help us solve what is the probability that she gets at most three successful serves notice that for this to be true she needs to get three successful serves or less so here this x value is less than or equal to three so what we need to do is we need to find the probability of, let's see, we need to find the probability of zero, find the probability of one, find the probability of two, and also find the probability of three, okay? Because here it's saying at most three successful first serves. So we need to find each of these probabilities using the for, uh, binomial distribution. And what's the formula for it? It's gonna be uh, n factorial over n minus x parentheses factorial x factorial times p to the x times q times n minus q to the n minus x okay so here for each problem for let's say the first one okay so we'll just kind of have this right here right. Um, here what are we going to plug in notice that if p is 51 percent then q has to be 49 percent because uh, Q is equal to uh, 1 minus P, right? If the probability of success is 51, then the probability of failure has to be 49. Notice that P plus Q has to equal 1, okay? So we have this for each of the problems. We're going to plug in P and Q are each going to be, P is 51, I'm sorry, 0. 0.51 and Q is 0. 0.49. Here, our value of N for each problem will be let's see it'll be nine for each of these right but what's the x value we're going to plug in our x value is zero our x value is one our x value is two and our x value is three so what you need to do is you need to calculate you need to plug in p q n and x for this prop for this formula four different times and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three, okay? So here, let's, what I'll do is I'll show you how to do one of them and then the rest you could, let's see if you could do it by yourself. But here, this would be a nine factorial over nine minus zero factorial times zero factorial times P to the X would be zero times, oh, what's our P value? Our P value is 0. 0.51. So let me write uh, 0. 0.51 to the zero times 0. 0.49 to the, this is N minus X. So this is nine minus zero. So this is nine, okay? And something like this, I'm just gonna put it into the calculator and um, Actually, you know what? The best way to really solve this problem is, I mean, you could do this math. Um, let's see, let me get a blank piece of paper and 
show at one time. So how would I actually solve this with no with no calculator? Um, let's see. So this would be nine factorial over nine factorial. And what is and remember that zero factorial is equal to one. So this is just equal to one, and this just becomes point fifty. Well, this is also 1, 0.51 to the 0. So notice that this is 1 times this, which is also 1. And then we just need to do uh, 0.49. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you have to multiply here. 0.49 to the 9, and out of whatever that is. Let's see. 0.49 to the 9 is equal to 0 0.0016. So this is equal to... 0.0016, which is roughly uh, 0 0.002. Okay, so there's a, a very small probability that she has zero successful serves out of nine attempts. And you would have to, you know, do this for each of these problems. But what I would do is I would not do all of this and I would just use my calculator. And there's a nice way to just plug in these values. For each of the problems so watch what happens all you need to do is you use your calculator and let's see what do you do what do you do you go to uh, second vars right and now here we want to go down to binomial PDF okay now here this number of here let me zoom in a little bit the number of trials here is your end value so we just put in nine your p-value is your probability of success, so we're gonna put 0.51, and our x-value is gonna be zero. And it may be different with your other calculators, but this is, if you go to binomial PDF and you put in these numbers, notice that if I hit enter, enter, hey, this was the same number that we got over before in the calculator, right? It's that 0 0.0016. So notice that this was equal to point. 0016 or that's just 0 0.002 uh, like let's say if we're rounding it to three significant digits so this probability over here is 0 0.002 and what I'm most I'm just gonna do the same thing with my calculator for each of these problems notice that here the p-value is always 0 0.51 right and here the only thing that's changing whenever you plug it into the calculator so here we'll do it again we just go second vars, so you're hitting, you're applying the, you're going to the distribution menu. So then we just go down back to binomial PDF, and notice that the trials stay the same, the p-value stays the same, and now this is just the x-value. Like this is just, you know, so much nicer to use your calculator than having to manually do every single one of these calculations. You don't want to waste your time doing that. And just, yeah, you just round it to three significant, uh, this is equal to what? 0.0152, but that's just equal to uh, 0.015, all right? Um, if you don't have a calculator, uh, I would say get a calculator, right? <laughs> Make your life much easier. Um, and then we'll just do the same thing for two and three, and then whatever we get for these answers, we'll add it up. So let's try it again, so we can do this much faster. This is binomial PDF. Let's go to X value is two, enter, enter. And now we get a uh, point zero six four. And then let's see probability for three. That would be, this is point zero six four. Let's see probability for second distribution binomial PDF, enter, enter, X value three and voila we get 0.154 so 0.154 but what we need to do is we need to add all these digits I'm sorry all these uh, values here so if I have 0 0.00 here, let me clear this real quick if I have 0.002 plus 0 0.015 plus 0 0.064 plus 0.154 that equals 0.235 so 0.235 which is a 23.5 percent and what is this question what does this value mean in the context of the question it states that uh, the tennis player will 
it'll be a 23.5% chance that she has at most three successful first serves out of nine attempts, and if her probability of a successful serve is 51%. Okie dokie. Um, here, this was the sample question given to by the department. What I also did was, I, no, nope, that's the next question. Ah, yeah, over here. So what I did was I cooked up a nice series of questions for you to practice uh, the binomial distribution. So if you can, take a second, pause the video, copy this question down, right, and the A and the B. And I also have even more over here, C, D, E, F. And what I'll do is I'm going to assume that you know how to use, by now you know how to use the calculator to you know, just plug it in for the calculations. But the important part for this question on your exam is, how do you know, like, what will constitute, you know, as like, getting the question right? Because you see here, we had to know that at most three successful first serves, we had to calculate this would be P of zero, P of one, P of two, and P of three, okay? Doing the calculator work, that's just, you know, just plug it in. But knowing to get to do this for this question, um, that's what will, you know, help, you know, that this will help more with that. So, yeah, so I'm assuming that we have this copied down and let's try and do the questions together. So let's see, it says a student taking the SAT exam decides to guess on eight multiple choice questions. Each of the questions has five possible answer choices, making it a 20% chance. Find the indicated probability for the number of correct answers. So find the probability of exactly seven questions correct. So here your X value is just seven. So we're just finding the probability of seven, okay? And here, what are, so let's say like, imagine if you're taking a test, right? Or you're taking the SATs and you wanna guess on eight multiple choice. What's the probability that you, you get exactly seven questions correct if the probability of success is 20%? Um, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty low, but let's see how would what would we do? What's our n value? Our n value is eight. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Our n value is eight. Our x value is uh, seven. Our p value is 0.20, and our q value is 0.80. So you could use the formula, right? You could use eight factorial over eight minus seven parentheses factorial seven factorial times 0.20 to the seven times uh, 0.80 to the, uh, what's it called? To the eight minus seven, so that's just, that's just one over here. I mean, you could do this math or you could just use the calculator and it'll give you an answer. So yeah, let's do that real quick. So here we turn this on, we go, uh, where are we going? Oh yeah. Binomial PDF. So this is number of trials is eight probability of success is 0.20 and the x value is 7. I'm gonna guess this is pretty low. Yeah, this is a really, really low number. So this is 0.819. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see something, hold on. It'll be, here you have 0.819, I'm sorry, uh, point eight point, uh, let's see, one, yeah, I'll write it over here. Eight, one, nine, two, right? And what this e to the minus five is saying that you have to go one, two, three, four, five digits over here. So it's, this is the probability that you get, if you guess seven questions correct, um, out of eight multiple choices when there are five possible answer choices, so this is a very, very, very low percent chance. And it makes sense in the context of the question. Like if you guess on seven questions, if you guess seven questions correct out of eight choices, out of eight questions, and the probability of getting a question correct is only one out of five, the chance of you getting seven questions correct is very, very low. And that's what this number represents, okay? Um, let's look at the next part, part B, the student answers at least four correctly. So to get this, you need to do the calculation of X has to be greater than or equal to four. 
So you need to do the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5 plus the probability of 6 plus the probability of 7 plus the probability of 8. You have to do, when you, you put this into the calculator for your x value being 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the, you know, these values stay the same. I mean, I'm not going to do this right now. I'm sure you could just put them into the calculator, but if you find the probabilities for all of these and then add it up, that will equal the probability. All right, let's do the next part. You see, the idea for the uh, for this part, uh, for the extra sample problems for question five, it's for you to practice this part over here. It's like saying um, that she gets at most three successful first serves in. So that's why we're going to do these questions over here so you have an understanding of which probabilities of x to find. So here, the student f answers fewer than 3 correctly. So this would be x is less than 3. So we need the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. Because it's saying fewer than 3. It's not saying you're including 3. Um, the student answers no more than 2 correctly. So this is the probability here. This would be x is less than or equal to 2. So this is probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. Okay, The student answers none correctly. So this is just the probability of 0. The student answers at most 3 correctly. This would be x is less than or equal to 3. And this is probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 plus the probability of 3. Okay, and then you just use your calculator to find these calculations, add them up, and that's it. What's the probability that the student gets none correctly? This is probably a very high number because, you know, you don't have, you know, you only have a one in five chance. Actually, the answer is, no, actually, no, this is not, well, yeah, I'm interested. But what would this calculation be? Um, this would be second distribution. What's the probability of getting none correctly? Oh wait, what, what am I doing? Let's see, second distribution, binomial PDF. All right, what is my calculator doing? Okay, second distribution. Enter. Okay, so this is eight, zero. What's the probability? 16.7%. So that's like what, one in six or something? So this is a one in six chance, I think, or something like that to get none correctly. All right, so uh, I hope this helped. Uh, we'll go to question six in the next video. See you then.